it's like a seed and then normally I would see a white um, like a dot and it comes from the outside high above me and it will enter this point and then the moment it enters the brain right, this sudden rush of energy will just cover your whole body yeah. Namaste welcome what is Samadhi? is there a process involved in achieving this high and deep meditative state? And if indeed there's a process, what are the steps you know, we need to take in order for us to progressively attain the state of Samadhi? Are there requirements involved? And what do we gain out of the experience? Right, so those will be the concepts and elements that I will be discussing in this lecture. And the other things as well as we go along. Away. Now, Samadhi is just one of the many terms and names given to one and the same energetic meditative experience. Some cultures, especially the Eastern culture, you know, Samadhi is referred to as the Zin or the Chan experience. Right? And the tradition of yoga is called the Samadhi or the Union. And the Christian uh, tradition, um, this is also referred to as the mystical union. So it's this full accord of the many aspects of our mortal life, which involves the physical, and the energetic side, which is the breath, and the energetic pathways we hold inside the body, the subtle body, and of course, the um, spiritual side of our existence which is our relationship with the universal form, yeah. which you might refer to as the grace of God. Because when we're able now to unite all of these entities, elements, yeah, we will be able to witness the Samadhi while yeah, living a mortal life. Well, I've achieved Samadhi quite you know, many times already. And each experience is different. The stages I go through in achieving Samadhi, they vary as well. And the manifestations vary too. But there are two elements which should always be there. So these are the requirements. One right, is the cultivation of our own energy and controlling its flow. And second, yeah, allowing the grace or the energy you know, coming from the outside of the body yeah. to enter our own. And these two forces unite inside the nervous system, leading to high absorption. Thus the mind could witness the experience. So the, the physical body is the dwelling of the divine force, which is in, in tradition in yoga, we call the Kundalini Shakti. And we all have this you know, dwelling inside our body. You know, the exact location of the Kundalini energy is the pelvis, the hips. The sacred anatomical component of our body we call the sacrum, the joints of our hips, the lower back. And this force that comes from the outside, or it comes from the outside, it freely enters the body through this gift of breathing. And this force is normal, normally passive, yeah. because it's just a natural gift yeah. for us to experience life. Yeah. The most beautiful gift of God. Life. And the prana, which we call this force, yeah, 
Normally, it just goes through our body, through our spine. And it's abundantly flowing inside the head, the nervous system. This is the seat of the higher force. And then from the tops of the spine, it descends to our body to nourish our body, all ourselves, of this life-giving force. And together with our, with our own, so we, we promote yeah, the existence of life. Yeah, the Kundalini energy, because it's so potently flowing, the helps. Yeah, you might consider it like the energy of the mortal life. Yeah. Because down the helps, we have the reproductive system. And everything that supports yeah, the lower functions of our body. Right. And then when finally, when we're able to yeah, harness the potential of the Kundalini energy because the Kundalini energy normally is in a dormant state. Or, um, through the practice of yoga elements, especially those um, we do in the Hatha Yoga method, we're able to free this energy out of our body. Thus, eventually, later on, as the body does develop, we will utilize the skill in throwing her out of our heads. Yeah. And, and then it will just manifest in different stages of development, all the way to you know, feel her rising, because she rises, and that's her nature. This Kundalini energy, the moment she is already ready you know, to you know, explore you know, different parts of the body, she rises up through the spine. And there are met methods for us to do that function of rising. Either you do it slowly, or you can hasten it through the practice of um, cleansing your yeah, kriyas. Right? Either way, she rises. Yes. Yeah. So this brings me to the topic of, is it really necessary for us as practitioners of meditation to uh, practice those deep and intense kriyas which involve some physical um, elements, asanas? and breath regulation for her to rise. Right. No. We could allow her to rise just by opening the body. Yeah. By simple movements. You can just even dance through it. Yeah. As long as you move the spine and the abs. Right. Although it will really take time. Yeah. And an exercise of well power of the mind. Because the, the second element is here. Yeah. When you exercise the willpower of the mind, yeah, and then by just opening the body, particularly the hips and the spine, you can use the willpower of the mind yeah, to rise her up. Because the Kundalini energy is by itself a sensation when it happens. All right. And it will only manifest a sensation without you doing the asanas and the breathing work if you hold the body still and steady. And it's not easy, because the body will always feel sensations. And then normally, after a few minutes of keeping it still, yeah, whether in a sitting position or lying down position, your, your, your senses will distract you, and then you will lose it. So yes, by keeping the body still, like no movement at all, stop the body or even make the breath so light just to allow the, the functions of your heart and your lungs to work while you keep the body in the rest of your mortal element still, it is possible to awaken the Kundalini. All right. The danger of that is this, because we need to regulate the intensity of the Kundalini, because the Kundalini energy is an electricity, really, it's a raw powerful electricity. Similar to the energy you know, we flow through our you know, household appliances and electricity. So we need to regulate the voltage that we allow to flow through our nervous system. Right. And then we could regulate the flow of the, the energy or the voltage by the utilization of our energetic valves. We call bandas. So we have like three bandas, energetic locks. And then as the energetic locks 
you know, process the energy, we make the intensity less uh, powerful. So we lessen the pressure, the electrical pressure, we send the nervous system. Yeah. The danger of like, for example, not utilizing the bandas and then just um, use the power of the mind, the body, yeah. it could lead to intense electrical uh, current to suddenly rise inside the nervous system. And it's not good for the health of your brain because it could create short circuits there. And then here we are uh, abusing the process, yeah? and then each time becomes a difficult process. Yeah? Because we will be needing a higher electrical force to achieve the same experience. Right. But yes, it's possible through using the mind and stilling the body. Right. The beauty of cultivating it from the body itself, and the energetic system, is that we, as practitioners, are in control of the whole experience. Thus, you know, we achieve samadhi yeah, over and over again without suffering damage yeah, for a nervous system, the body in general. So we keep it safe. Yeah. And the experience doesn't become too, I would say, mysterious. It doesn't become too esoteric. Something which we could appreciate from a more real life point of view. Thus, when we share the experience, yeah, we do not come across as esoteric, yeah, um, not too much of an extraordinary experience. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. One of the most beautiful realizations of um, achieving samadhi is that we would understand uh, not just the physical aspect, the energetic aspect, but our spiritual nature too. Right. So those are the two requirements. Yeah. Number one, body should remain still and steady. Yeah. And then through the energetic system, the energetic locks, yeah, we control the flow of our on energy, which is equilibrium. Because the, the energy which gives power to the experience is actually the Kundalini. Right. Without the Kundalini, right, the prana won't have any sensation at all. Because only through blending the Kundalini that we give yeah, a higher sensation to the prana. Because the prana is subtle, it's passive. It doesn't have any power to cause yeah, intense, I would say, electrical sensation. It doesn't have this power and force to stimulate the, the neurons yeah, higher and above the normal level for us to achieve that state of absorption. Yeah. The Kundalini, when it blends with the prana, that makes it happen. So that's the, the purpose of the body, because the body is the seat of the um, bodily energy, kundalini energy. And this kundalini arises. Right? Now, the next element, which is here, the head includes the mind. Yeah? This is so true, and I've experienced this many times already. Samadhi happens when, for example, you're lying down already and you achieve that state of um, temporary body paralysis already, you call that yoga nidra. Like the sensations of the body just dissolve. Like you are lying down in a lifeless state, seemingly lifeless state. Yeah, the breath is so light. Yeah, the body ceases to feel anymore. All right, you don't feel any sensation at all. Even the breath becomes so silent, you can't feel it. It's called Tevala Kumbhaka, like the breath just goes in a seemingly flat pattern, but you know you're breathing. You are breathing, but you are not thinking of breathing anymore, because it just happens organically. That's Kevala Kumbhaka. So Kevala Kumbhaka is not just stopping the breath. 
seemingly the breath stops but it happens without you doing it intentionally right? while in a deep absorption stillness right? it's not easy to achieve because just stop the body and then here the breath goes in a panic mode yeah? and you will gasp yeah? so kevala kumbaka is the, the skill of breathing but not breathing what makes it happen it's your madness the energetic clocks break for you inside like you recycle your own breath inside your own body definitely yeah, the oxygen will enter the body but in a very 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 subtle manner that it's very felt right so in a natural desk it's an organic way of breathing through the energy lock and then we can only achieve that yeah, again, it's possible just to use the power of the mind. Yeah, but a more meaningful and safer way is to use the energetic locks. And the other many things we practice in yoga, such as, for example, Kriya, Sketchari, Mudra, those are the many other um, elements we could practice to develop the energetic and the astral system. Right. But after those elements, we just we still need to lie down or we still need to practice stillness whether in a lying down position or, or sitting you know, without doing any of those uh, bodily functions anymore All right. stillness yeah. All right. now while you are lying down still the mind will now you know, do its function right. samadhi really happens inside here as the mind goes through the many stages of consciousness, you witness them while your body is lying down in a seemingly lifeless state. All right. So like the body doesn't exist anymore. You only have this, you know, the mind. All right. First, the, the mind will go to this stage of like being conscious and less conscious. Slowly, bit by bit, you're gonna go to a dreamlike state. All right, first, conscious and less conscious. All right, and there will be manifestations. Like you're gonna feel now the electrical pulsation cover your body. That's one. Yeah. So, the beauty of doing it from the body is that there are stages that we follow, and in each stage, yeah, there are manifestations. So you know where. Are you at the current stage of your meditation, leading to samadhi? Right. Conscious and less conscious. And after that, you will enter this um, stage of like, you're about to sleep, but you're still awake. All right. And there are manifestations. You will hear um, the anahata nada, like the ringing sound and then you will be able now to distinguish between the left hemisphere and the right hemispheres of the brain uh, there are distinct sounds happening there and you you're gonna you're gonna um, isolate the sounds you need for you to enter the second stage because the first uh, stage the frequency the anahata nada is like high pitch uh, first if you listen to that it will lead you to the next stage which is um, a slightly low humming frequency like and that uh, a bit lower frequency could be um, felt and heard um, the right hemisphere of the brain all right yeah really this is uh, so um, uh, procedural yeah um, there are energetic um, elements involved here and we will only understand that through the cultivation of our energy box and the, the nadis, of course, with the uh, cleansing elements we do in yoga. All right. So after that, you will keep your awareness on that particular sound and yeah, the other manifestations. And of course, the rest of the body feeling the pulsation. Yeah. And the mind there becomes agitated. Definitely the mind will not be able to stop thinking. Thoughts will come in. All right. So how now do we not totally stop the mind but channel it to something which is one pointed because that is very important you know you need to keep your mind fixed to a certain one pointed i uh, would say element so aside from that you know, right side of the hemisphere hearing listening to the sound uh, 
Now the inner eyes would have to be involved now. All right. Inside the forehead here, this is what we call the spiritual eye. All right. I don't want to be too mysterious about this. Simple. When your eyelids are closed, open your eyes inside your closed eyelids. And then fix your attention to the image. All right. Many, many images you will see. First, it's a white radiance. And you might see um, different you know, colors, um, flickering lights. Right? If you pay attention through the very center of that image, here, all right? That's why in yoga we normally look here, yeah, between the eyebrows, because that's where the magnets, because as you fix your attention there, you will feel like magnetic current accumulating and flowing through this way, inside. And you will feel this part of your forehead tickle a bit, like electrical pulsation tickling this spot. Right. Once you feel that, the mind gets fixed to that, while the other side of you listen to that um, low frequency sound. And as the, um, the experience go more intense here, the sound dissolves. So you enter this next stage. And the next, next stage is between um, dreaming and not dreaming. So you will see other visions as well. Like you're dreaming, like a lucid dream. Like you're dreaming, but you know you're not dreaming because you know you're, you're meditating. You are still connected to the physical body. You are very aware of your you know, physical condition. Where are you located in the room, something like that, and your position. Right? But you are uh, seeing image like you are dreaming All right. while you are fixing your attention here. All right. And there, are, there will be magnets here, like possession, while you see those images. The next stage is very important because that happens so quick. Well, you're fixing your attention here, yeah. this is very true. Something will enter the point from the outside. It's like a radiance trying to pierce to that point. That particular element which comes from the outside, I'd like to call it the presence of God. Because really, yeah, it's something that comes from the outside of the body. You will see it. Yeah. It's like a seed. And then normally I would see a white, um, like a dot. And it comes from the outside, high above me, and it will enter this point. And then the moment it enters the brain, right, this sudden rush of energy will just cover your whole body. And it happens. Yeah. And even then, that's just the first stage of the Samadhi. Uh, but it's already deep. And then you will experience many things. Yeah. Electrical current covering your body. Yeah. And then you will rise. You will really witness your own body rise out of your mortal body. I would normally feel my hands first will rise of my physical body and the rest of my consciousness separates from my mortal body. But my mortal body is still attached through the energetic locks, the bandas. Thus, I could still breathe while my mind is going somewhere. My consciousness is going somewhere. All right. So, there will be many out-of-body experiences. Spinning, rising, out-of-body experiences. And even image. Yeah. And then even people, you know, people you do not know, you will be able to interact and connect with them and astrally, energetically, and even 
and we say psychic. Yeah. What happens after? You will now go to the stage of you are not even dreaming at all, past dreaming. This next stage is quite scary, why? Because upon entering that stage, you will be sucked in into this deep vacuum inside the chest. Here. Like your awareness, your consciousness suddenly goes back inside the chest. And then your heart, the chest region, explodes. It becomes so big, this chest region, the heart. And then the mind gets sucked into that point as well. And then suddenly, everything just stops. Bang. Even the breath stops. The only thing that connects you to life is your consciousness. Because you see. And of course, the the, the last drop of your energetic awareness, the bandhas. Right. And then your, your mind, the inner mind, will see only two shades of colors. You may want to call it color. Now, I would normally see white color at the top and then separating the black underneath. White and black. Yeah. And here, right higher up the right hemisphere of the brain, the sound will happen again. And then the sound is deep. So while uh, the whole of your elements are being sucked into this hollow deep space inside your heart, in the chest, your mind sees black and white, and your mind hears mm, humming. And then you can hold it as much as you know it's safe. Going past is not healthy. It's irresponsible. Because when you go past it, you might die. There is another dimension beyond this. But I'm not brave enough to explore. I know there is another dimension. Yeah. But I needed to come back. Because I still have a responsibility to fulfill, not just for myself, but also for my students, my family, and the community as a whole. Because the, the realization is so beautiful. After the practice, after experiencing Samadhi, you will now understand the essence of um, life, yeah? the divinity and the sanctity of life. Because each and every one of us holds the same force inside. Yeah. And amidst the many terms, again, amidst the many terms and names and cultures and ways. Because at the end of the journey, at the end of the tunnel, how cliche it may sound, the last and final destination is just one. The same for all. If you may want to refer it to like seeking God, then definitely. We are all seeking just one God. Many cultures, many religions, traditions, and ways, it's just one and the same thing we are talking about here. So there should be no conflict, only understanding and support for all. Till the next time. Namaste.